Welcome back to Me Being Cheap. I have 10 one gallon bags of tomatoes that are frozen and they are thawing in the kitchen sink and I do have them in some uh, warm water. I'm going to tell you the way that I do my tomatoes and I think it's the easiest. So if you've got a small garden like we did, a backyard garden, oftentimes it is hard to have enough tomatoes to do a batch at any given time. So what I like to do is as I harvest the tomatoes, the ones that we're not using fresh, uh, wash them, core them if they have a core, uh, cut out the bad areas, and then pop them in these freezer bags and they are pretty much ready to go. Um, now these green ones down here aren't green tomatoes, these are the Brad's Atomic Grape. That's what they're supposed to look like. So um, you can see like for example on this one, if you can see, um, I cut the top of it off because it probably had a bad area. And then like on this one, it's already been cored. So this is a way that you can um, accumulate enough to make it worth your while to can a batch of tomatoes. So that's what we're going to do. I'm still thawing these out. Um, I'm going to set up my, uh, my spremmy, which is the item that I bought off of Amazon that um, harvests or uh, processes the tomatoes uh, very quickly gets rid of the skins and seeds so given that um, we both work full-time and we don't have a lot of extra time to do a lot of these types of things I am looking for tools to make this go faster so previously I would have had one of those old um, uh, I don't know if they call them uh, the, the wooden thing that's called a dibble and then the strainer or a sieve or a sieve. That takes forever because you got to sit there and grind, grind, grind and then scrape the uh, contents out and then grind, grind, grind again. The machine that I'm going to use makes quick work of it. And you can also use it for other fruits as well. So I will get that set up and then I will check back in with you. All right, here's my setup. This is the Spremi. Again, I ordered this off of Amazon. It is from Italy. I guess they make a lot of tomato products over there. Tomatoes going through here. There's a corkscrew in here. Juice and flesh comes out here. Skins and seeds come out here. We will process the skins um, a couple times to extract all the juice. I have 10 one gallon bags. Each bag weighs between four and five pounds, so we're doing between 40 and 50 pounds of tomatoes. So I'm going to get this set up, start a timer, and I'm going to show you how long it takes. I'll check back in with you in a few. about three and a half bags in. We've got this much in the pot, this much scraps. We are a little over eight minutes. I'm going to hit stop on that. Problem is, these are still too frozen. I'm going to have to put them back in the sink. The ones on the outside of the bags were thawed. The ones on the inside, there's still a lot of ice. So, back to the kitchen. I'll check back in with you in a few. Alright, welcome back. The first pass took about 20 minutes, 26 seconds, and that was me running inside and getting bowls of the tomatoes to bring out. Remember, they were previously frozen. And tonight is Halloween, so I've been having uh, trick-or-treaters, so I've been hitting the pause button quite a bit. So, 20 minutes, 26 seconds to do between 40 and 50 pounds of tomatoes. This is what we have with the first pass. This is a 35 quart stock pot. Um, looks like it's about five inches from the top. This is how much scrap we have and we are gonna go ahead and run these through uh, two more times. 
to extract all the juice. I'll be back. I'll tell you the total amount of time. All right, 27 minutes, 23 seconds is the total amount of time to run 40 to 50 pounds through the spremi. And that includes a first pass and then two additional presses of the skins. And to me, it's always important to press the skins because that's where you get the thick, the thick paste from. All right, this is how much we have. I'm going to put a lid on it and probably start cooking it down tomorrow. And I think I might try and dehydrate these skins. I've seen some people that do that to make a tomato powder. However, I really don't know how you would separate out the seeds from that. So if you've got any ideas on that, let me know. All right, catch you later. Welcome back to me being cheap. Um, these are a few jars that I water bath last night. Um, I do have 14 jars in the pressure canner, uh, but did not have enough to fill a second pressure canner. Michael had made some sauce with uh, vinegar, hot peppers. Um, they were like the Tabasco style peppers. It was the, what was left after our freeze that we had and uh, some tomatoes. And that's what's in these smaller half pint jars. So we water bath those. Um, but this is what uh, was in the pressure canner. And I do have 14 jars of tomato sauce. Um, let's see if I set this lid right here. So I didn't film bottling this up yesterday. Um, in a nutshell, I had that large stock pot of um, tomatoes and I had it cooking down early in the morning. Cooked it down quite a bit just on a slow level to thicken this up. And it ended up being such a nice day yesterday that I did not bottle it up during the day. That is my smoke detector I need to uh, change battery in. Um, I ended up tearing down the garden um, because everything was pretty much dead. So that's what Michael and I worked on yesterday. Um, when I got to the point of where I was canning this or bottling it in the jars, I ended up with a kitchen full of boys, so it was pretty noisy in here. A lot of background, but basically just fill the jars up to the head space. Um, put on the tattler lids. I'm, I'm wondering if I had a seal, seal rate of 100%. I'll let you guys know. I'm going to let these rest a few hours, completely cool down, and then I'll, uh, I'll check, check the seals. All these so far look good down here but anyway that's how you do it if you are a busy person so to recap if you're getting small batches of tomatoes from your garden pitch them in the freezer take them out thaw them and then I use that spremi which is that tool that automatically uh, or very quickly de-seeds and de-skins the tomatoes and gets all the juice and pulp out. That's what I use. I know they're pretty pricey, but for me, um, working full time and trying to get this done, sometimes having the right tools to do it, um, even though it was a splurge to get it, makes all the difference in the world. And then I uh, just cook the sauce down, let it set, and then later in the evening, I did jar this up, put it in the pressure canner, and let it go. And then um, turned it off, and then the pressure canner has been setting all night, which is what I'm unloading right now. All right, well, I'll finish the rest of this, and later today, I will take these uh, rings off and let you know what the seal rate was on these tattlers. Thanks for watching. Alright, welcome back. So, out of all these jars of tomato sauce, which we had 17, these three here did not seal. So we had one wide mouth, one regular mouth quart, and one regular mouth pint. Now, this one was water bath. This one over here was water bath, and it sealed too. So, I think when I, uh, I'm going to have to reprocess these obviously since they didn't seal, but I think what I'll do is take a good look at the rim of the jar, make sure there's no tiny nicks or cracks, 
uh, take a good look at the rubber ring on the tattler and then take a good look at the tattler itself. So, all in all, it turned out well. And again, this is a way that you can do canning if you work a full time job. You'll just have to do it in bits and pieces. So, um, it's kind of late tonight. Um, I'm not going to wash these jars up, I'll let them set another 24 hours or so and then probably tomorrow after work get them washed up labeled and put on the shelf thanks for watching